Good morning, everyone. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners on which we um, gathered here today. And I'd also like to acknowledge um, my co-chair, Peter Watts, who has um, given sessions this week. Thank you, yep. I come up from a first world country, a multicultural society. My country was colonised by the British. Over the last 200 years, explorers came through, through our land opening up Australia for development. Whilst killing our people, placing them in missions, reserves and settlements. To this day, explorers still come through our country, our land for minerals. In the last few days, we have learnt about the good, the bad, the ugly side effects of uranium mining and the nuclear industry. If we stop for a minute, and just to think about what we've learnt over history and the historical events associated with uranium mining and the nuclear industry. It scares me because I've only been in the game for seven years. I'm no academic. I speak from the heart and live on my country. <clears throat> I'm a bit nervous also. so. Um, Mother Earth was created for all of us, and we were created to look after her. From the dawn of creation to our ancestors, we got the birthright as caretakers, custodians and protectors to keep her safe. Our people have always been at the forefront of their struggles to protect their country. There are many nations within the Australian nation. Most people say Australia is a lucky country, the land of opportunity. Our people um, prefer to differ because we know it's not. Our people have always, sorry, our people have been on their lands and territories for over 60,000 years. The uranium and nuclear industry has only been in and around Australia for the last, or since 1950s. Our people have been and still are the main opposition against uranium mining and the nuclear industry. The heads of states, our governments, and policy developers have always and continue to make policies that affect our people and to keep our people oppressed. Their laws and policies change all the time to benefit them and not us. But for our people, our laws don't change because it's the law of the land that we belong to. Heads of states are making backdoor deals with other countries and approving mining applications to state claim for mining exploration and operations on our lands. All peoples as a collective need to start talking up and standing strong together against the uranium and nuclear industry across the world to save our mother and to save humanity. Let's start pointing the finger at the heads of states for their bad practice in developing policies because there is no such thing as best practice for the uranium and nuclear industry. I don't want to be a preacher preaching to the converted, but seriously, the non-Indigenous peoples that live in our countries needs to start using and quoting from the United Nations Declaration 
on the rights of Indigenous peoples to start supporting the Indigenous or First Nations peoples fight and struggles against the heads of state. September 13, 2007, the United Nations General Assembly endorsed and adopted the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. But unfortunately, Australia, where I come from, was one of four countries whom did not, who, whom did not support it, but now supports it in principle. Um, the United Nations Declaration can be used as a tool and a guideline for our people to enforce and exercise our rights as Indigenous peoples. We also can use the United Nations treaties and conventions by keeping our heads of states accountable for their actions. A clear example of um, what's been going on the Mirapipa in the top end of where I live in my state have now taken their fight to the United Nations and they are... Um, so this is a tangible example of the roles that Indigenous peoples everywhere should have in determining what happens on their country and their communities. So they've actually taken their fight to an international arena because we know that we don't have friends in our own backyard. These include the rights under the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, the International Convention on Civil and Political Rights, the International Convention on Economic, Economic Social and Cultural Rights and the ILO con um, Convention 169. So we do stand up for our country, but it's the matter of where we take our fight. Our government wants to expand their mine and go underground, but they're standing up and saying no. <laughs> Jeffrey Lee of the Kungara Nation, this is neighbouring country to here. Um, our government, so our heads of state has been humbugging, going, trying to make deals with other people, but he's just saying no. So, no uranium mining in his country. And I'll use a quote from him as well. When you dig a hole in my country, you are killing me. I don't worry about money at all. So, clearly, Jeffrey Lee can see that money does not worry him. He doesn't worry about money. He'd prefer to live off his land and the land makes us richer. Another example of protecting Manawanku, this is being shown on Saturday. It's a story, I guess, of our country. Um, this is with the Walpuri, uh, the Waramungu and Walmumpa people fighting against a nuclear waste dump that's proposed on our country as well. And it's a must-see, because you know that we're not all for uranium. Um, I guess now, the situation with Australia, our head of state, encouraged by, I guess, back home I would say puppets to the government, believe that Australia could be the world's international waste dump site. If you look at the map of Australia, you will clearly see that there are uranium mines that exist already. And there are sites of nuclear waste dumps. I live on the oldest beach in the world. And the driest. But I still go out and walk and live on my country. I still go out and hunt on my country. The heads of state do not do what I do. Or what our people do. 
this is a way of showing what the Australians got planned for our country. The heads of state did not come knocking on my door and asking me if I would go in partnership to sell off uranium to other countries. He did not come and see me and have a cup of tea with me on my country, eat my bush food, and ask me if I wanted a nuclear waste dump on my country. So looking at and hearing about what's been going on across the world, when you look at Australia and the environment in which we live in, whether if it's political, or just from the little man or the little woman with their families, their children. We need to stand up to these people. So let's go back home, gather momentum, build on people power and not nuclear power, put people before profit, and keep uranium in the ground where it belongs. Thank you. Behold.